her airway. Seconds later, thankfully, she started breathing. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Yep, there you go. Okay, he's crying, he's crying. That poor mother, my goodness. The police chief praised the officer for his quick thinking and said he did an outstanding job. Well, according to the USGS uh, today, there was apparently two quakes yeah. there, James. I, thankfully, I, I didn't feel it. The uh, <laughs> last one I felt was uh, several years ago here in Dayton, but uh, unsettling, I'm sure, for those folks who, who might have felt a little bit of a, of a murmur. A little bit of a shudder earlier on this afternoon. Yeah, and you might be wondering why is it now that we're talking about an earthquake that happened earlier on this afternoon, and it's mainly because we didn't hear many reports of people feeling those earthquakes, one of which was at 2.23 this afternoon, and then the second one just about 20 minutes later at 2.41. Notice the magnitude of those quakes. A 1.8 just to the north and west of the Jackson Center area and a 2.4 just to the northeast of Anna. Now both of these quakes were six to seven miles below the Earth's surface. So when they're on the minor end of the scale and so deep below the surface, it's not uncommon that you don't hear or feel that kind of a quake. So I asked the question on my social media, did you feel it today? Sandra Jones on my Twitter account said, I actually felt it in Anna. Felt more like an explosion than an earthquake because it didn't last long. So if you think you might have felt a little bit of a shudder earlier on this afternoon, but you didn't talk it up to being an earthquake, maybe it was. And you can send me a note over on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Here is the Richter scale and how you measure earthquakes. When you have an earthquake that's at least two and a half or less, you usually don't feel it, but it can be recorded by a seismograph. And that's why the USGS recorded the earthquake, but we didn't have many reports about it. So I was doing a little reading about it, and the area where the quakes occurred apparently falls in what's considered the Fort Wayne or Anna Rift Zone. And it happens to be a location in the Northern Miami Valley where we tend to see more and more of these earthquakes than other places across the area. A live look outside. We are quiet in the Piqua area. And you can see temperatures still sitting in the middle 70s. We have a mainly clear sky out there, and it'll stay that way for the rest of tonight. We'll fall to a low of 64 degrees. Not as cool as last night, but still cool and comfortable because the humidity right now is still on that lower end. It starts to ramp up tomorrow, and so does the heat. With sunny skies and temperatures expected to get into the 90s for tomorrow, an air quality alert has been issued through most of the Miami Valley until midnight on Wednesday. So be mindful of that. If you have respiratory issues and you have to be outside, try to limit your time outdoors or go out earlier on in the day or later in the evening. Our high tomorrow, as I mentioned, 92 degrees. We will have plenty of sunshine throughout the day, which Futurecast shows. Through 6 p.m., you can see mainly clear. Now, now, as we move into tomorrow night, clouds move in quickly, and by Thursday morning, we'll have a chance for a few showers or a thunderstorm around. That will be the case throughout the day on Thursday, and there might be an isolated, stronger thunderstorm in there with some gustier winds and heavy rain, but generally that threat is on the lower end. Temperatures will come down just a bit on Thursday, but watch, they bounce right back up as we move into the weekend, and 90s are forecasted to be in the area all the way into the early part of next week, and even when they start to fall off, they're only into the upper 80s by Thursday and Friday. So here is that five-day forecast. The heat returns for your Wednesday. We'll have a few storms around Thursday. Overall, not a bad weekend, James. It will be hot, though, with a few isolated storms. Tomorrow morning, meteorologist Kirstie Zanzini and Jesse Mag will be up with you at 425. They'll have the latest on the threat for storms for Thursday. All right, McCall, earlier in the newscast, we asked if you planned on getting a COVID vaccine. The latest